uh, is uh, a student that is, uh, has been with us uh, since 2013. He's gone through all of the various level of the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute and then likely decided to apply to the master. And uh, is really one of the students that is extremely part of the family of our group and, uh, and he has been contributing a lot, not only here in the school, but in many trips that we've been going through throughout the years. And is one of the students that his energy has kind of uh, reverberated around uh, all of the community and we're extremely proud of him. And uh, I would like everybody to uh, welcome Noam Israeli on stage. <laughs> Um, and during the year, all of the students have a, an advisor that work with them uh, on a weekly basis so uh, to help them shape their ideas into this final project that you will see. And uh, a Noam uh, advisor was Alan Chase throughout the year. So thanks, Alan, for, for all of your help with this. And the title of the presentation is Andalusia Music and Music from the Magaheb. Machep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm get it. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so, like Marco said, uh, I'm gonna talk to you today about my project for for this program. And this year, I was checking out a lot of Andalusian music and music from the Maghreb, which is a region in uh, North Africa, including countries such as uh, Morocco, Algeria, Libya, and Tunisia. And uh, before I begin, I want to thank again Alan for all the support throughout the year. Thank Marco and Danilo and all the BGJI teachers, the faculty, and thank Camille and her team, and Enrique. Thanks for coming, being a huge inspiration on me. And uh, okay, you must be wondering why I chose this as my subject for my for my final project. So, well. At first, I wanted to, this project, I wanted it to be about Israeli music. I'm from Israel, and I wanted to see what is Israeli music. I was kind of naive, because for one year, I think it's not enough time. So uh, I decided to, to focus on one aspect of Israeli music. This music from, from the Maghreb and Andalusian music has a lot of effect on Israeli music, because a lot of Jewish people from that region immigrated to Israel over the years. And specifically, for me, uh, my ancestors, my ancestors both, both of my mother's uh, parents, they come from a Spanish heritage. So it speaks directly to my roots. And, uh, well, music from Andalus Andalusian music started around the 9th century with uh, a musician called Ziryab. He's also known for being a huge influ influence on uh, flamenco music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, over the years, it has evolved and changed. And specifically, the other music I'm going to talk about, which is uh, shabby music, popular music from the North African region, has evolved around the 19th century by a musician called Muhammad El Anka. He's considered to be the master of this music. So. Uh, in, this, in this year, I was checking out a lot of music recordings that, that uh, I found from this time and modern stuff also. So the concept was to explore the music and to merge it with what I already do, which is jazz, I listen to a lot of rock, everything that I did before. I also wanted to experiment drumistically to take percussion parts and to try and uh, put them in the drum set to see how it how it works. Every track on this every track on this uh, on this EP you could call it represents a, a part of the journey in the process of checking out this music of studying this music. I'm gonna expand on that later. Also, one of my biggest goals was to combine everything that I learned in Berkeley, including ar uh, playing, arranging, producing, and mixing, and uh, this is called culminating experience, so I try to take it literally and just combine everything that I learned here as much as I can. And also another important step, because everything for me comes from teamwork. 
in music, and in general, it's the best. So, even though it's my project, I really had a point of that it's going to be everyone's project. So, if I have a band, everyone's going to be involved. Everyone has an input, and I really wanted it to reflect everyone's uh, sound and vision musically. Okay, so we have five songs and a bonus track, and every song represents a different stage. I'll show you that later. First, I want to show you all the musicians on the project. I was lucky enough to get a lot of beautiful people, amazing musicians. Ron Warburg, trumpet, Ron Eitan Harmonica, Leith, Neria Sidon, Lefteris Cordis, James uh, Dale, Seifadin, Paul, Marta, Edmar, Isaac, Rob, and George. And also Reda, but I'll tell you a story later about Reda and Seif. And the production team, Roy Bukris, engineered all of the sessions. He's right there. Thanks, Roy. And they <laughs> did an amazing job. Couldn't have done it without him. And Adam, you all know. And I had a lot of help with the video by Nicole, who's here too, I think, over there. And Sachi. Thanks. So the first song is a traditional Andalusian song. Uh, it's, it's part of a suite called Anuba, and that, those are traditional musical forms that were created back then in the 9th century, 10th century. And uh, there's a, a bunch of those. I chose one, and also uh, one, one part of the suite. It's called Tushiagri. It's based on a scale, which is Taba, and it's called Grib, just like the title. And like the makam system in Arabic music, the scale is not just a group of notes, it's also this guidelines of how to improvise and how to manipulate those notes. You're gonna hear that. It's in a rhythm called inseraf, which is technically, I notated it as 11 eighths, but it can be heard in many different ways. It can be heard in a six eight feel, it can be heard in five. I'm still realizing a lot of different things about this rhythm, so see what you can hear. And the ending is in a different groove. It's called chlas. The word chlas literally means enough, which symbolizes the ending. It's in a 6-8 rhythm. And for this arrangement, I, took, I got inspired by the origin. I took a specific recording, checked it out as much as I can, transcribed it, and brought it to the ensemble. The main differences are that the drums have a very big role in it, and usually it's a percussion-driven uh, thing. And also the instrumentation is very different than the, the traditional instrumentation. So here I have a little video of a more traditional rendition. Let's look at it. This is called an istikhbar, the solo in the beginning of the piece. show you what we did with this. So originally I'm supposed to have another solo section in the beginning, but a friend of mine called Reda, he lives in Paris, he recorded just two days ago 
and for some reason couldn't send it over yesterday, so um, it's not on the, the track yet, but it's going to be. And uh, so for now, the, the beginning is going to sound empty. If we skip to the last part, you can hear this groove called chlas that we talked about. You hear the transition. This piece for me in the journey of studying this music represents tradition, going into tradition and getting as close that as I can to really realizing what they did. And in this process, I took the rhythm, Inselaf rhythm, and I learned actually from a good friend of mine, Seyfedin, who also recorded on this and sent tracks from Paris, uh, how to play those parts on the percussion instruments and then I put them on the drum set. So I'm going to show you this process now. One of the instruments is a darbuka on the left, and it sounds like this. Another traditional instrument is the rik, sort of a tambourine, but a little different. It sounds like this. And together. And all of these recordings are by my friend Seyfedin, by the way. And this is the drum set version of what you just heard. Mm -hmm. Other instruments that you can hear on several recordings from Andalusian music is the kuitra, oud, and mandol. They're all string instruments. The oud is the most famous of them all. Uh, very, very common in Arabic music all around. Kuitra is very, is considered to be very traditional for Andalusian music. And mandol is considered to be more of a popular instrument in Algeria, used to play the shabi music, the, the folk music that we're going to introduce next. Actually, not next, after this one. <laughs> so this is, this is the second song, Shnei Shoshanim, which means two roses in Hebrew. Uh, this is... An orig my origin, basically. I chose a song that I love a lot from Israeli culture and tradition. I arranged it for a band of great friends and musicians. And it was written a long time ago, I think, in the 30s in Israel. And the story about how it was written is interesting. They were sitting in a coffee shop in, in Tel Aviv, and a lady came and sold some roses. And one of the composer's wife, she bought two roses, and she asked them to write a song about the roses, and this masterpiece came out. This is the lyrics. I'm going to skip it because it's here too. Here is a version by a very famous Israeli singer called Shoshana Damari. <laughs> Shir, 
small video of what we recorded. So the next song is the first combination that I try to make between what I do and also the music that I'm studying. And it's called Lala Fatima. It's a popular Moroccan song written and composed by Hamid Zahir in the Shabi style. And Shabi literally means pop, fol folkloric music in uh, Algeria. But it's, it's also, there's a different, different styles in all of North uh, African countries. Every country is very influenced by each other, but it sounds different than each other. It's influence, influenced by Andalusian music, and it's by African music of the native people that lived there, and by Arabic music originating in Iraq, in Baghdad. Yeah, an another point to make is that Shabi music is also very, very popular. Not very popular, I would say, but it is continued in Israel, and a lot of people play it. It's not like Rihanna or something, but... <laughs> But, uh, but it, uh, there, there are orchestras in Israel playing this music, and a lot of Jewish communities from that area, they kept this music going and brought it, brought it to Israel. That, that also, that's why I had the chance to study with a lot of people there. I'll show you a little bit of the original. our version.
have to keep going. Also, thanks. Thank you to all the band also. Some of them are here. Left the light. <laughs> so this is the clave sort of of what you just heard. And this is sort of what I'm playing on the drums. And also this is a part that was taken by the percussion from the percussion instruments. So I'm gonna show you the parts. It's the Darbuka part. And the Rick part. together already. And then the drum set. Ah. Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> next song is another combination I did uh, with uh, a jazz standard and actually the rhythm of the first song that we heard, the Inzeraf rhythm in 11-8. And the guys improvised also on the chord changes and we had this intro on an, on an F drone lathe took a solo, very much like an istikhbar, like a traditional istikhbar. And well, I'm not going to play this because you all know it, we'll play this one. I'm on the maximum volume. I don't know how you guys feel, but for me, this rhythm, while being very, very obviously rhythmic and moving and, every, and all that, I also feel it has a very relaxing vibe. So that's kind of what I was going for with this arrangement, the voice leading and everything. So the last song is an original composition by Roni, Roni Etan, the harmonica player, that we both arranged together. And this is kind of a combination of what we all we heard, all of the aspects that we heard. also starts with his solo. It's in a taba in a scale called Ram El Maya.
skip forward. This piece is pretty long. What you hear in this song is a classic example of, of a call and response with a singer and an orchestra. We were trying to go for that sound, a singer making a statement, and then the rhythm section plays very sparsely, makes room for, for him, for the presence. And then the orchestra replies and everything becomes a little bit busier and more, more rhythmical. So this is the last song. I can ask some questions. Please clap for Noam, my Israeli. Amazing. I put some music in the background if you want to put it up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to have uh, some com comment from the panel. Alan, you would like to start? Uh, congratulations, Noam. I, this project was uh, exemplary to me for this program. Um, you, you started with, as you said, a thesis topic that was too broad, but you quickly realized that and you focused and you were very successful in focusing on uh, realistic goals, um, researching, practicing, arranging, composing, recording, producing, bringing your MP&E major skills, you know, to this. Uh, this isn't a question yet. <laughs> I don't have that many questions because we talk so much about this, but I just want to... Uh, share with everyone that having heard these pieces all the way through, I mean, one of the frustrations of these short presentations, it's necessary, but uh, is that we can't hear the sense of musical form and uh, of whole pieces, but your pieces are very, very successful in that way. And that's a really special thing and not easy to achieve in jazz or any music to have long pieces that really move and keep you interested and excited all the way to the end and, and keep their passion and growth and sense of forward motion always, and each piece has that. They're very moving, very effective pieces, and um, superb playing. One thing I just want to say, I guess, uh, for the future is, and I'm saying this only because you did it, you did more than most of my advisees in actual research, like formal research. You really learned a lot about this music. Others did as well, but you really did a lot of that. And there's even more you can do, and I hope you will continue while focusing on your music and playing and creativity. Also keep that, because you have a real interest in, in deep research and really going into the you know, books, recordings, historical music, and, and uh, you have a lot of potential to go further with that as well and share it as a teacher, perhaps, or somehow. So that wasn't a question. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Echoing that, congratulations to Noam. Excellent work. And what you started with when you commented that you wanted to bring everything that you've learned and done at Berkeley together, from your performing to knowing more about music to MP&E to all of that stuff, I think you've done a superb job at bringing all that together. And the standard of the performing, the musical content, the mixing, is excellent. So I just want to, because we've been in so many classes together and, and it's been so intense for both of us, I just want to take two seconds and clap yeah. to that. <laughs> excellent. So one of the things that I wanted to underline is that seeing your presentation, I can see that there's a depth and a wealth of knowledge that you possess on the music that is very impressive. And to me, it's not only impressive, I also really enjoyed that it's inviting for me to know a little bit more about all of this stuff. If there were areas to underline on things that could be improved, I think 
obviously, as Alan stated a moment ago, it's a very short presentation, which doesn't leave a lot of space for us to be satiated. But one of the things that I kept sometimes when I didn't feel satiated, the thing that I kind of wanted most was because you and I have had the chance to have so many just personal conversations that start on content, but then develop into our own personal views on what that is. That's kind of what I wanted a little bit more of, you know? That yes, there's all of this knowledge, but what do we do with it? And you're doing tons with it. I just wish that maybe that could have been distilled into something that was a little bit more in the presentation. But aside from that, everything else was great. So congratulations again. Congratulations. Uh, beautiful result. Um, I'm wondering a little bit about the process for you of translating the ethnic instruments to the drum set. What was that process like for you? Were there challenges? Was it easy? What was your process in doing that? Well, it, w it wasn't very easy. I had a really good teacher. I had a bunch of teachers, but one specific guy, uh, Seyfedin Helal, who was here a couple of uh, two semesters ago, and now he's in Paris. He was a great teacher. He's from Tunisia. So I, I was lucky enough to get, to get the information from, from someone who grew up in that area. And he gave me, actually I forgot about this because of the time, but he gave me this drum. This is a, a bandir. And this is very popular in Moroccan music. He taught me how to play it. Like, stuff like that, you know. And he left it for me, and now he's in Paris. He sent me those tracks. So while he was here, but also on Skype, he gave me Skype lessons after he left. He taught me how to play this, and then I incorporated this instrument, for example, in my drum set. Uh, and the rest of the process is just listening to a lot of music, trying to figure out different ways of doing it. Some people did it before, and uh, there's, a, there's a great drummer called Karim Ziad. He's uh, Algerian, who lives in Paris, I think. And he, d he did very similar things, not in, a, not in a similar context, musical context, but but very similar concepts of drumming. So I just took as many, as many samples from as many places as I could find, and you know, practicing and figuring out ways. Another question. Uh, in your research, in your um, looking at different uh, rhythms, did you, did you find that rhythms um, were attributed to certain meanings or certain contexts, uh, I mean, how much did you, did you find in that uh, realm? Mm. Well, in connecting to what I did with this project, I, the, the first rhythm that I introduced, in Seraf, that comes from a classical context of people sitting down and listening and not so much socializing. It's more like a concert, like a classical concert. While the other, the other group that I, the, the other groove that I showed, the shabby groove, the six-eight groove, is comes from from folkloric background. So more for dancing, singing. Actually, we're singing in that track, but we didn't really get to it. <laughs> and uh, further, furthermore than that, I didn't really get in too deep into it but I plan to. But th that's the main difference between those two, those two examples. Noam. Yeah. Wow. Um, my comments. First of all, um, I think that this uh, project you put together shows a part of you that I, I haven't seen uh, yet. And that the old production, the way you put this band, the arranging, uh, the old concept is so uh, outstanding to me. Uh, like uh, they said about your research, obviously so rooted uh, into, you know, so much of things that are uh, obviously you're passionate or felt passionate about and definitely come through your music. Um, I think that, you know, I, I want to praise this, this old, all what I see and all what you've done through out this year, you always brought this thoughtfulness, class, uh, and, and, and so much elegance in everything you do. And I think that the, 
the, the project really shows it in, in a way that I, I was very impressed. Uh, the band you put together is fantastic. Uh, the playing is really, I really hope this is one of these projects that I really hope we can really go uh, way beyond, you know, the scope of this presentation for your master. I think this is something that you really should continue. Therefore, I have two questions for you. One is um, in line of what Carl asked you about the rhythm, folk rhythm to, to percussion. One of the things, actually, before I ask you the question, I also want to tell you the. I think that uh, Dizzy Gillespie, as one of the pioneers of global jazz, would have been totally proud of the <laughs> rendition of your, of your alma. It's a great arrangement. I will say clap for Con Alma. That was really beautiful. <laughs> and that, that song, in a way, shows me how you put together the two worlds, you know, the, you know the, the Andalusian music and your research with the jazz. But my question is, I haven't heard that as much in the other song, and I wanted, and maybe because, you know, we just didn't hear, yeah. you know, the old thing, but to me it's a question, how in your mind you connect all of this research as with your jazz background and jazz drummer background? Did this something that you were able to, are you happy with the result? You felt like the two world were, you know, uh, uh, getting together, Oh, this was a challenge for you. Can you speak a little yeah. bit about that? Because we really didn't hear much of improvisation, and I'm just yeah. curious. It's because those, those songs are, are really long, that's why. I mean, right. like seven, eight minutes. And there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of other sections that include a lot of improvisation and different, different grooves. And uh, it, w it was a challenge, and it's just the beginning, I feel, combining and... Well, those elements are, are in me now, no matter what I do, I feel. So what, no matter what I play, I'm going to have some of that. But in this project, I feel like we took, as a band, elements from, from both worlds and put them together. And there's a lot of similarities in many ways, a lot of differences, but also similarities. And there's a lot of improvisation. I hope you get the ch I mean, I'm going to put it online eventually, and you, you're going to have a copy. I hope you get to listen to everything. Beautiful. And my second question then is, what's next for you? Like after, what what will be your next project? Is this gonna be part of something you continue? Hopefully, or, yeah. Or is this bringing new vision for you? Because you definitely tap into something here, very interesting. Yeah, my my personal project would probably be to continue this this thing and check out more things because it's huge. You know, I'm just touching the surface with this music, and specifically for this band, I hope to keep working. We'll see where life takes us. Now it's, a, it's an intersection. So things are changing, but, but hopefully we'll have the opportunity to keep playing together because I feel like we've achieved a, a really good result with this band. Beautiful. Noam Israeli. <laughs>